Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at the new release of Absolute Linux based on Slackware with the ICE Window Manager. First thing I want to tell you about is the resolution. As you can see, I've got a bar up top and a bar on the bottom. I tried to open it in GNOME boxes, it didn't work, so I've opened it up in VirtualBox. And for some reason, I go to screen resolution, go up here to resolution, go 1920 by 1080, click apply. It says you cannot turn off all monitors, otherwise you will not be able to turn them on again. So, I have a little issue with resolution, so I do want to apologize for that. But because this is a new release, I want to cover it. So, if you could just bear with me, we can move forward. So, what I'm going to do real quick is open up the web browser. It comes with Chromium out of the box. And it just basically states, Absolute Linux is a 64-bit Linux distribution based on Slackware. It concentrates on the desktop, and it's got to be ready for internet, multimedia, document, and general home use out of the box. And the OS interface stays out of your way, so you can get things done. It comes with things like Kodi, Inkscape, GIMP, LibreOffice, Google Earth, Google Chrome, Calibre, etc. It is a version compatible with Slackware, so you can use almost any package from the same version of Slack on Absolute. And then down here, it goes over some of their previous releases. And then if you go up top, you've got download, you've got about, you've got docs. Don't forget their forum. If you decide you want to download this and give it a shot. If you're having issues, you can zip on over here to the forum and get those questions answered. And then, of course, contact information. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And when you download Absolute, put it on a USB, throw it into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. You don't get a welcome screen because it is lightweight and it stays out of your way. It pretty much believes that you know where you're going and what you're going to do. So if you right click on the desktop, you've got open, open a desktop folder, open in rocks, X term. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal. And what I want to see right off the bat is if they have HTOP and they do have HTOP installed out of the box at present. I have two gigabytes issued to this virtual machine. At rest, it is using 229 megabytes of RAM. That is lightweight. That is probably the lightest I've seen of any of the distros I've looked at. So if you're looking for something lightweight and you want to put it on light hardware or older hardware, this is definitely a distribution you need to take a look at. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Let's open back up here. We've got new actions Devices, arrange icons, desktop settings, screen gamma, screen timer, screen position, screen resolution, and then of course info. And this just gives you the base folder, location, opens with, and then your permissions, read, write, execute. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. In the ICE window manager, if you come down to the bottom, you have one panel. You've got an arrow over here that makes that panel completely disappear. So if you want it completely out of the way and you want to do everything just from the desktop, you can, or from the terminal. So let's go ahead and click that back. You do have time, battery, calendar, and then, of course, you've got volume and internet. Now, if you right-click on the panel, you get about, refresh, undo, hide all, minimize all, arrange, cascade, tile horizontally, tile vertically. You've got a lot of different things you can do in here. Plus, it gives you the keyboard shortcuts for those if you don't want to use the mouse. So let's go ahead and click out of that. You come over to the left. You've got My Computer. You've got Chromium we've already looked at. Let's go ahead and open up My Computer. And right here is your file manager. And you can go back and forth. You can have just the hard drive listed, or you can have the file system listed, or you can have them both listed. So it kind of gives you different ways that you can set that up and make it more comfortable for the way you want to use it. Now this is Space FM File Manager, I do believe. So let's go down here to About. And it is 1.0.6. And it's a pretty decent file manager. You can actually get quite a bit done with it. It's not heavy per se, but it has a lot more functionality than some other file managers out there like the Dolphins or the Kajas or things like that. So this is a solid file manager and definitely in a lightweight environment. So let's close out of that. Show desktop right here. If you want to show your complete desktop, you can do that right there. And then we go to start. Up at the very top, you have control center. Let's go ahead and open that up. And let's move it to the middle of the screen and maximize it so you can kind of see what's going on. Now that we've got it open, you've got system. You've got about absolute version and repository information, run services, system monitor, 
change password, language, hard drive, set date, create user, time zone, and then applications. You got in here just calendars and reminders. Then you've got display, screen settings, desktop settings. You can just click like on desktop settings. And that'll bring your preferences up that if you wanted to change your background, you could. Like right now, we're on Absolute Linux. Let's see what else they might have in here. Let's go ahead and apply that. Click OK and minimize, and you have a new background. That's actually a very beautiful background. So I'll go ahead and open Control Panel back up. You've got Gamma Settings, GTK, Multimedia, Audio Volume, Also Mixer, Multimedia Installer, Multimedia Extras. You come in here. Some files used to encode or play media are dependent upon software that is in the U.S. and possibly other countries, restricted or even illegal to use without a license. So basically what this is telling you is, is this is where you're going to get your codecs. If you got specific multimedia that's not playing, you can zip over here and download it, and it's letting you know that there's a license that goes along with it. Basically, it's not free and open source. So we will go ahead and close out of that. Come over to network, email notification, network config, browser, Samba, printing, printer setup, HP, cups, printer control, software, add and remove programs, find installer, package manager. Let's go ahead and open up add and remove programs. And right here, you can go through here, double click on a package to see a description. Let's say we wanted that. That's double clicked. It shows you right there the information about the package. You would just come down here, click on install package and move forward. Like Avid Mux, that is a video editor. You could look that up and install the package right here. Now, if you're not comfortable with something like this, we can close out of that. And then of course you could go to the package manager. Let's move it over here. Let's make it a little bigger so you can see it. Matter of fact, let's go full screen. And basically what you would do in here is if you had a specific application you wanted to search for, you could right up top. So let's look for something real quick. Let's look for mPlayer. mPlayer, enter. There's MPV and there is mPlayer right there. So you just type what you're looking for up here. Do a search once it pops up. You would click on it and then you could mark it for upgrade or execute. So that's just a quick way to find different applications and different software. So let's close out of that. And then you come down to hardware. It gives you system information, disk space, and of course, memory usage. Let's go ahead and close out of that. We'll go back down here. You've got system tools. You've got configuration, multimedia installation, GTK theme, change password, system info, about absolute, keyboard shortcuts, memory usage, Audio, you got Asunder, CD Ripper, Pulse Audio, Pulse Audio Volume Controls, Editors, Education, Games, Geography, Google Earth, Map Viewer, Graphics, you got Display, Inkscape, GIMP, Full Screenshot, Network, you've got Chromium Web Browser, FileZilla, GRSync, ZenMap. This has got a lot of utilities right out of the box. FTTP, Putty, Office, you've got the LibreOffice Suite, Ebook Editor, Video, you got Avid Mux, Clip Grab, Cody, SM Player, SM Tube, Simple Screen Recorder. This is just awesome. Utilities, Drive Info and Formatting, Bluetooth Manager, Character Map, and there's just so much more in here. That's Screensaver. That's pretty interesting. Enter Password to Unlock. So we will go Root. Hopefully that's the password. So that was your Screensaver. And then File Finder, Shutdown, Settings, and Log Out. Well, that's just a quick look at Absolute Linux based on Slackware. That's their new release. It is definitely, guys, lightweight. If you're looking for something to put on an older system or even something newer that has modest specifications, Absolute Linux is definitely the way to go. What do you think? Is Absolute Linux something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like what the channel's doing and you like the videos, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.